to a new episode of Three to the Rescue interview. You are maybe watching us on YouTube or you are listening to us on Spotify. And as you know, we are a team or a group of three uh, advisors, three Thermomix advisors, who are based in Cork, south of Ireland. And we just got together during the um, coronavirus pandemic to produce interesting content and um, keep everybody focused on healthy eating, family eating and spending time together. So we started uh, this uh, cycle of interviews um, to also encourage everyone to listen to us while they're exercising or doing things at home or driving. And uh, today we're very, very excited because we have Dean Edwards with us. Hello, Dean. Good morning, ladies. Hi, Good morning. How are you? I'm very good. And yourselves? Very good. We are very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. No, it's no problem at all. Are... You, know, you know I'm a huge fan of the Thermomix. So it's it, it was only it was only right I came on and joined you ladies. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. And I was going to say right now that we are huge fans of you and your work. And um, we met you or we got to know you through Thermomix, but we have been obviously um, looking more into your work, into previous uh, things that you have done, your current um, uh, activities, and um, we would like to actually ask you about that. So I'm not going to, I don't want to talk too much, I want to let you talk. So um, for everybody who is listening to us, the vast majority know who you are, but can you please tell us a little bit about you for those who maybe don't know you that well? Okay, so um, my journey into the world of foods was not the traditional manner, should I say. Um, I was actually a digger driver and back in 2005 I decided to enter into quite a little known show at the time which was called MasterChef and I didn't know it was going to do anything for me. I didn't know it was going to change anything in, in my life. I just assumed I would go on, maybe have the confidence. I thought well, I might get through the first round, then I'll be back to driving my digger. So to find myself 15 years on, doing what I'm doing, working in the world of food is just absolutely incredible. But MasterChef really did change my life and it gave me the opportunity to go and work in the world of food. So, you know, 15 years is a long time. So to find myself still doing something that I absolutely love is, is incredible. But my journey, really did change after MasterChef um, 11 years ago when mm -hmm. I had my little daughter. And I know that you guys are probably familiar with Indy because she's yeah. the one who bosses me around in all the Thermomix videos and gets a real laugh out of taking the mickey out of me. So um, actually, I think Thermomix wanted to come back and do some videos more than, more than me, I think. But um, when, when Indy came into my life, it changed everything for me because... Before that, you know, you have a little bit of time on your hands, you know, so I would wander around, you know, go to a butcher's, go to a, you know, a nice food market, spend hours cooking. And, you know, I yeah. just had my time to myself to do the things that I wanted to do. And then Indy came along and it was like, oh, this, I haven't got that time anymore. You know, any parents out there, you know, they will tell yes. you. It's the same thing for everyone. Um, so I needed to kind of adapt the way that I, I thought about food and the way that I treated food. Um, and, you know, now she's getting older as well. You know, she gets home from school and it's like, I'm hungry. You know, what can we, yeah. what can we have for dinner? So it wasn't all about taking, you know, hours and hours to put a lovely dish together. It was sometimes chucking things together really quickly. So it started me thinking outside the box a little bit when it came to food. Um, and that really channeled me myself into the niche that I'm in now, really. And it's, it's, it's all about home cooking and home food. Yeah. And that's really what inspires me. And to have had the opportunity over the years to you know, cook on TV, showcase my sort of food, you know, that, that home food, that home cooking to the viewers out there, you know, with, with a view. I wanted to inspire people to get back in the kitchen and cook. So I found myself in a very fortunate position where I can cook the food that I love and share that with people. And that, to me, totally encompasses everything I love about food. That sounds amazing because it's not only that you cook what you like and you share it. It's actually that people believe in you and they trust you because they know your history. 
and that's something totally invaluable. And actually, that this that you are mentioning now, uh, Dean, ties in very nicely with your latest cookbook that was launched just over a month ago. Uh, it's a Cook Slow, which you already had one um, already yes. published, but this one is light and healthy, which I find very appropriate now that we are not able to move as much with this whole pandemic thing. So can you tell us a little bit about it? Because I know that it's doing very well. Yeah, so back in 2018, I released the original Cook Slow book, which again, I'm very selfish with the sort of food that I like to cook. And I cook the sort of food that I love to eat. So I love food that is, is slow cooked, you know, and I, just something that you can put into a slow cooker in the oven, into the thermomix, and you just let those low temperatures just create the magic. It's not rocket science, you know, we can be as basic as chucking a load of vegetables, a little bit of stock, some herbs into a pot and just let that slow heat just do its thing, you know, make those flavors develop. And, and that to me was always an amazing thing. You, the, the thought of, popping something in the oven, nipping out for a long walk and coming back and the house smells of food and, you know, and you're hungry and you've worked up an appetite. It was that that really intrigued me. And my sister said to me at the time, she said, Dean, I love my slow cooker. I couldn't live without it. And I thought, are slow cookers all that? And I thought, okay, there, there might be something in this. There's a lot of slow cooker fans out there. So I thought, yeah. okay, let's have a little play, a little experiment. So I wrote the first book, which was called Cook Slow. And it, it, it went really, really well, you know, not to sort of, you know, give myself a little no, pat no. on the back or anything like Please that. Please do. It's true. Um, it yeah. went really well. And I just think it sort of tapped into a niche of people that, you know, maybe that didn't have huge amounts of confidence in the kitchen. And what could be more simpler than just chucking a load of ingredients into a pot? And that's basically it. You know, and I know the book's called Cook Slow, but actually... A lot of dishes, yeah, they cook over a prolonged period of time, but they're a lot of them are actually really quick to put together. So to prep, to prep, yeah. it's, it's sort of fast food in a way. So you can put it on in the morning, you come back home, you've got a meal waiting for you. So anyway, I wrote the first book and, you know, like anything, you put everything that you have into it. So all of my ideas, everything, you know, you put your heart and soul into it. And um, unbeknown to me, you know, it, it was a, a big success. And the publisher came back and said, Dean, it went really well. We wanted to do a cook slow part two. And, you know, can you imagine I've gone, what? Yeah, you went like, what? <laughs> you know, what? 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 You know? I've used up all my ideas on the first one. You know, so <clears throat> it was all about actually, it was a lot harder to write the second book. But mm -hmm. in a strange way, that's some, sometimes when I do my best work because I was under pressure and I was under pressure to think outside the box a little bit because I didn't want to rehash what I'd done in the first book. So a lot of people do imagine that that kind of slow food movement and slow cookers and, and, and stews, it comes out the first, you know, the, the sign of the first frost of the year, you know, around sort of September, October kind of time. It's like people get the slow cooker out the cupboard, dust it off use it for a couple of months, put yeah. it away. I wanted to dispel that myth. I wanted to show people that actually you can use this method of cooking all year round. So actually I thought I saw the box and you know, there are a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of salads in the book, but it's not all it. about chucking And you have, you have sweet recipes as well. You have sweet yeah, recipes yeah. That, are, that, that are not particularly heavy or caloric. It's really, yeah, really absolutely. creative. So you get, you know, at the very, very basic, you could do things like, you know, fruit crumbles, compots, you know, those sort of things. But you can actually do sponges and cakes, you know. So in the new book, there's a le my mum's lemon drizzle cake. You know, I can't even claim it for myself. <laughs> it's a recipe that I grew You're up on. Honest. Lemon, you know, it's, <laughs> mum's recipes are always the best, aren't they? Let's be honest. Yeah. So, um, you know, so that it's a very versatile way of cooking. And um, I wanted to show people that you can cook that way all year and you can cook in a healthy way, which is really important because a lot of people imagine straight away, it's going to be stodgy, heavy, calorific food. And it doesn't have to be that way. You know, one of my favorite recipes in there is a, is a ham hock in watercress salad. Now ham hocks are so cheap, so economical. And one hock will feed a family of four really, because you can pull it apart, you straight oh, yeah. up, 
you put and you can get leftovers. Food. You can get leftovers for sandwiches the following day. Exactly. But, you know, by putting something like that in a slow cooker, you come home, you shred it all up, you put it through a salad, you know, you've got an absolutely incredible meal. And best of all, which obviously fits in with what you guys are trying to do and, you know, spread that positivity and energy and fitness. It's healthy food. And it's food that it if you are working out you know with your exercise and you know your, your fitness it fits in with that and one leads to another you can't have one without the other there's no point going for that long walk or that run and then coming home and having a pizza you know it has to work together or a, or a nutella sandwich <laughs> yeah exactly although that is quite nice <laughs> it's a bit of balance you know if you have one day a week that doesn't matter <laughs> exactly one day a week yes yeah. That, that's just fascinating. I really like how you develop the ideas and, um, and, I, and I can understand how the second book around was harder in a way because also the expectations were higher. So, mm -hmm. so well done. I mean, I mean, you must be so proud of it. It's, a, it's, it's such a fabulous book. But now I just wanted to uh, give the floor to Maria because she has something to ask you as well, Dean. Cool. So Maria. You have, been, you have been in a lot of uh, programs on television. So was it scary to be on telly for the first time? And what are the challenges of cooking on live TV? Because uh, we do cooking classes as well. And sometimes things can work <laughs> as they should. <laughs> so do you have maybe any funny stories that you want to share with us? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky, actually, to have done what I've done over, over the years. And um, funny enough, when after MasterChef and, and I went to, you know, started my journey in the world of food, television was the last thing that I wanted to do. It, it was really not <laughs> something that interested me at all. Um, and then I got the opportunity to do a TV show, which was called Take on the Takeaway, which meant I would work alongside all of my food heroes. So the likes of Gary Rhodes, Ken Hom, Jean-Christophe Novelli, Angela Hartner, you know, just incredible chefs that that were at the top of their game and you know I thought I have to do this mm -hmm. and off the back of that that led to the live tv and I actually found that I enjoyed the live tv more because it's going to be what it's going to be you know this <laughs> once once your time starts you have that's that it. time until your time finishes <laughs> things go right things go wrong you know that's that's life but actually I, I I found over the years when things go wrong I think it almost inspires people that are watching, you know, that, that are cooking at home that maybe don't have as much confidence because they say, okay, well, Dean just messed that up. Maybe I'm not <laughs> such a bad cook. And Correct, it can happen to anyone. And people is more gracious okay. about it as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, the only thing, you know, that, that I find sort of quite tough uh, and, and I really did struggle at the start, actually. When I, when I first joined this morning back in, Oh, wow. When was it? It was 2009. 2009, I, I started work at ITV on this morning and I found it really tough because, and I think that was more so a confidence issue because I've not long come out of uh, appearing on MasterChef and I thought I had this opportunity and I thought, well, why me? And what I, I've, you know, I've not been in this industry long. So why do people want to see what, I'm doing on TV when there are, at the time I, I considered, you know, proper chefs, why aren't they doing it instead of me? And then it was a real confidence issue. And it took me about six months to actually get my head around it a little bit. And I was lucky enough that, you know, the, the, the boss at ITV at the time, they believed in me enough to know I had it in me somewhere. And uh, I had a little bit of a turning point really. And, and it was a, a life turning point, a life changing moment for me really. Because I used to really overanalyze everything that I did. And I would almost, so I wouldn't get caught out. So say if Philip Schofield or Holly asked me a question, you know, that I'd be, what happens if they ask me something I don't know? I don't want to look stupid. So yeah. I'd almost overload my brain with too much stuff. So by the time I actually came to filming, my brain was just scrambled. I had so many things going on. And yes. I just, I wasn't enjoying it. And I, I remember watching myself back and really analysing it and saying, look at, you know, look at you. You're doing something that you love and you look like you hate every single second of being there. And I thought <laughs> to myself at that point, either do it and enjoy it or just 
give it up. And I decided, you know, it was almost that, that overnight, I kind of, I woke up with a different mindset and I thought, come on, let's, let's do this now. Let's, let's we, have we it. Are glad, we are glad that you went on and decided to <laughs> yeah. have a go. <laughs> yeah, but how beautiful it is that you were able to identify that, that you were not enjoying it and that mind, that changing in the mindset changed everything. So that's fantastic. It, it, it really did. And, it, and it, it was a real struggle for me to, because I was obviously doing something that I truly loved and had an opportunity that so many people would have loved to have had. And, and it was almost, I wasn't taking it for granted, but I felt I wasn't deserving of being in that that spot and um i'm so glad that i i managed to change my mindset on it and you know i i absolutely love it now and it's going to be what it's going to be and and we were talking yeah. you know just just a second ago about live tv i've had several several occasions where i've completely messed up you know and i, I remember <laughs> a few years ago we like those moments yes we know yeah, that we, we have, have them all the time <laughs> <laughs> The one that really stands out for me was a few years ago. It was around this time of year, actually. I was making a, uh, I think it was a toffee apple tray bake on Lorraine Kelly's show. And we were using apples, you know, which are in season at the moment. And um, I remember having this whisk and I, I would have preferred a Thermomix, to be honest. So it made my life a lot easier. <laughs> but I had this, this whisk. And for some reason, some crazy person that designed this, this whisk, it put three speeds on it, so one, two, three, but okay. back that way, there was a reverse. So I've okay. gone to what I thought was turn it off, and actually I've turned it in reverse, and I've had the, you know, the whisk heads out of the bowl, and it's completely sprayed Lorraine Kelly with cake batter. And <laughs> oh my goodness me. <laughs> on live then, TV, or it so was recorded? Looking, yeah, live TV. Oh wow. Live. <laughs> oh my God. So then I've looked across at Lorraine, and and then the heads of the whisk actually popped off as well oh onto God. the floor. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> no. And I just wanted the grain to swallow me up. But do you, do you know what? It's These bits are the bits that make live TV what it is. It's, it's about those moments. It's about those crazy sort of things that happen that aren't supposed to. And funny enough, I thought, oh, my God, I, you know, I'm never going to work on TV again sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> next thing I know it pops up and it's on Lorraine's highlights of the year you know it's, it's that sort of thing so they, they love that sort of thing when we mess up yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. and it's memories that has happened to us we have had many classes where yeah. things didn't go according to plan and those are the ones that we really remember and every time we remember them we keep laughing about them so yeah it makes that exactly. really good but I'm really glad that you changed your mindset and you were able to get over the imposter syndrome that a lot of us sometimes we have at certain points in our time in our life and that's why we got to know you because we got to meet you last year in Birmingham in the thermal yes. convention and you did a cook live for us so it was really good to get to know you so tell us, what is that you like the most about Thermomix now that you have been using it for quite a while now? So for me, it's, it, it, it kind of encompasses what I'm about when it, when it comes to food. And I don't create recipes for my own ego. You know, I don't create recipes that I don't think people can, can cook at home. And for me, the, the, the teaming up with Thermomix was absolutely perfect fit because a lot of people think that Thermomix is a specialist piece of kit that only restaurants have, you know. But actually, what I find it leads into is, I think it's amazing for people that maybe aren't that confident in the kitchen. Um, it's an all-in-one piece of kit that pretty much does absolutely yeah, everything. everything. <laughs> you haven't got that confidence, it can even show you how to do it. And that's all it is. Food and cooking is all about confidence. So you do something, you get a level of success with that. And then you say, okay, well, I might try that recipe now. And then it builds and it builds and it builds. And soon enough, you're not even on the cookie do platform looking for recipes, you're creating your own. And so the Thermomix allows you, I believe that confidence with, with a little bit of technology, which gives you that, that breathing space. You know, and and also, I mean, my my kitchen's got so many pieces of kit and gadgets. A lot of them I don't use, 
but I use my Thermomix. So that's why I'm a big sort of fan and advocate of it. And, and I, I do believe that it's, you know, it's a phenomenal piece of kit, you know, not only for beginners, but even people who, you know, back themselves as being pretty serious cooks and chefs, you know, there's a place in every single kitchen for one. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that in the summer you were uh, cooking as well with your daughter doing the, the live events where we had a lot of the community here in Ireland joining you. Actually, we did uh, yes. events where everybody would be at home cooking along with you, Dean. And one of the things I love as well now that you mentioned cookie dough is that all those recipes are now as well available in a collection that you have with them. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, I, I was... Yeah. Um... I was obviously very, very happy to do, be involved with Thermomix anyway, but to actually get my own recipe collection on the Cookie Do platform is, is, is a pretty cool thing. Um, it's a big thing also. I mean, it's, not everybody gets a collection in there, so it's a really big no, thing. No, no. And I feel very, very fortunate. And I said, I, you know, I don't work with brands and scenarios that, that I don't believe in. Um, but I love my Thermomix and so obviously to have the opportunity to do these live cook-alongs which happened during lockdown which was a really tough time for many a people. lot of people when um, you know so many people struggled with their scenarios you know they could be the mental health of not being able to mix with other families friends and you know the one thing that I, I really do believe that brought a lot of people together was food yeah you know and, right. and a lot of people had an opportunity where before lockdown, you, you're living busy lives, you're running around, you might be going to work for nine, 10 hours a day, maybe even longer. Food becomes secondary to that. Now during lockdown, we had this unique scenario where people were at home and they had time to cook. And I, and I believe from, from chatting to lots of people, people actually rediscovered during that time their love of food and cooking. And it wasn't all about convenience and sticking a ready meal in the oven or the microwave. It was, okay, we've got a little bit of time on our hands today. So why don't we It was we adventure. It, it was, it was. And yeah. as long as you were able to get your hands on the ingredients, you had time to, to hopefully explore and, and start cooking. So for me to be able to do these Thermomix cook-alongs during lockdown with, um, with Indy was absolutely amazing. And... I mean, I love I love cooking with Indy anyway, but she wasn't supposed to be in these videos. So oh no! Is that, is that, that no, happen? No. <laughs> no, she, she's she, told the show. <laughs> she's yes, told the did. show. I know that. <laughs> you better watch out. <laughs> yeah. So so we were, we were doing the first one, which was uh, we did a summer fruit crumble with a creme anglaise, um, all all done in the TM6. It was a great recipe, and. In the summer, myself and Indy, we, we love going out. We love picking blackberries, you know, whatever we could do. We, you know, we, we take a few apples off the trees. We call it scrumping in Bristol. <laughs> okay. When, when, you, when okay. you steal them off the trees. We do just take them. <laughs> um, so we always do that. We always wait fruit picking and we make crumbles. So I said to um, my friend at Firma Mix, look, me and Indy cook together when we do crumbles. Should, should, should we get involved? Should we, should we do it together? And she's like, okay, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's try. And all of a sudden, Indy's managed to muscle her way into every video. Um, <laughs> so it was just, it was great. I loved it. She loved it. It was something that we really enjoyed, enjoyed doing together anyway. And um, yeah, I do believe she stole the show, to be honest. And um, it wouldn't surprise I'm me. I'm sorry to say, but yes. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and old, if, old Dino's probably going to have to go for early retirement, in Indy's words. Good well, for you, but I mean, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's a good plan. And um, as you're mentioning uh, your daughter, who by the way is so cute, she's so adorable. Um, and she's very camera friendly as well. She, she was like made to, to be there communicating. But something that I wanted to ask you about that uh, as a mother myself, and actually I have two daughters as well. Okay. Um, I think it's great, not only that, that she's so fantastic when she's working with you, it's also that she's involved in the kitchen, which is something that is not unfortunately that common anymore nowadays. Uh, children, I mean, many families do it very, very well, and they are cooking with their children all the time, but it's going a little bit out of fashion. So could we ask you as well, 
how do you do it? How do you get your daughter excited about cooking with you? And about, for example, I, I have a little problem with uh, letting my daughters to, to cook. They're, they're still little, they're four and nine, uh, but the nine year old, you know, she's old enough, but I'm always on top of her because, oh my goodness, she's going to cut her finger off or <laughs> is she going to burn herself? So how do you do it with, with, a, with a nice, relaxed approach without being a helicopter on top of the poor child? Um, it is tough to give them that little bit of space, uh, but I'm, I'm only learning from, from my own life experiences myself. And I was fortunate enough to have been brought up in a family and we all loved food. So, you know, my, my first memories of cooking as, as, a, as a child was, was at my nan's, you know, and it's my job to stir the onions. You know, that, that was it, that's what I did. And I love the smell still to this day my favorite smell in the kitchen, garlic and onions, just cooking down. And I was fortunate enough to have been able to have taken part in that. And I truly believe if you get your kids involved with the cooking process, they're so much more likely to actually try the food. And it's all about keeping their, their minds open because children are very, it's very black and white, isn't it? I like this, I don't like this. Yes. Have you ever, have you ever tried it? No, but I just don't, I know I don't like it. Listen, all you need to do is try it once, okay? This is what I always said to Indy, try it once. If you don't like it, I'm never gonna force you to eat it, but you have to try it because you may not know whether you like this and you could go years and years where there could be something. Imagine if as a child I said, ah, oh, no, I don't like chocolate. You'll no, be missing out. <laughs> 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 and imagine if I, if I got to my age now and I'd never tried chocolate, I think that would be a lot of years wasted eating chocolate. Doing it. So <laughs> you need to try things. And, and that's, that's what it is. So by involving Indy in the kitchen, I'm helping her get that confidence, not only to, to cook, but also to try ingredients. You probably noticed on the little cook-alongs, she eats more of the ingredients that get, then get cooked. <laughs> it really annoys me. Yeah. It really annoys me. It's every, Where's that gone? You know, it's, and she's eating everything. In my tummy. But secretly, I love it because she loves food. Um, and, and actually, she's really, really growing in confidence in the kitchen. She made a, a chocolate fondant the other day, and it was amazing. And That's a tough recipe to get right, I have to a, say. Well, put it this way. When I did my MasterChef journey, I cooked chocolate fondants, and I messed them up. It's, it's, and it's easy. And she, 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 and she doesn't. Yeah, exactly. So um, that would be my advice to anyone who has children and they want to get them more involved in food and not only the eating of food, but also the cooking is you have to give them that little bit of leeway. You have to give them that. You have to instill in them that confidence, really. You have to say to them, OK, come on, come and do this. So you do have to trust them with a knife, you know, start them off with a nice Bloody but it's fun. also a great way for family time, for bonding, also give them skills that, you know, you can do mathematics in the kitchen with the grams and yeah. measuring. So it's a great way of getting everybody involved as well of the family. In the Absolutely. And and so. when, it, when it comes to children these days, you know, like Indy's 11 now and, you know, she's like every other kid out there, to be honest with you. All she wants to do is be on her phone or iPad, mm -hmm. you know, it's, all children are like, if you gave them a choice, yeah. oh, do you want to do this? Or do you want to go and FaceTime your friends or play Minecraft or whatever it is they, they do? They're going to want to do that because that's what their friends are doing. So it, it's really important that you, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. I'm, I'm not, you know, any expert on parenting because we all find our own way. But for me, it's, it's important to get that, sectioned off a little bit you know I'm not going to say to her she can't do that because that's what she wants to do all her friends are doing it but at the same time we do need to do other things yeah so you, need you know to give them alternatives I think yeah exactly and, and you have to encourage them to do that and the only way you can get them to do that is by making it fun so okay. it's it's all about that and that's that's the way it kind of works with us you know we try and make things fun and you know it's it's just we, we find our way, but it, it's about giving them the opportunities because it's very, very easy for me to sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, do this, do that. It doesn't always work for um, 
for everyone. You know, my, my partner Liz, absolutely love her to bits, but she cannot cook for toffee. And her mum is the most incredible cook, you know, but it hasn't gone down. Passed, passed down. It's, it's the interest. Liz loves food, but she doesn't love cooking. So no matter how many times I said to Liz, come on, come and cook this. Yeah. Not interested. <laughs> but in a strange way, I'm happy to do it myself anyway. But she, she doesn't Indy, need to. That's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> she's lucky. Well, exactly. <laughs> but eventually, Indy will need to. And what I don't want Indy to do is to get to the age of, I don't know, what, what do they move out these days? Hopefully it's not 40. Um, <laughs> maybe, you know, 20. 25 or whatever it might be when Indy moves out. I want her to have the skills in the kitchen to be able to go away on her own and cook food for herself and not just out of packets and that business. I want her to, even if it's two or three recipes that she yeah. has in the locker, it could be a curry, it could be a, a spaghetti bolognese or a chili con carne, mm -hmm. just something very, very the basic, simple. The basic things for her to be able to feed herself when she is home and she says, it will help her to be an independent woman. That's correct. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's and it. she will be a healthier person as well. I mean, that's brilliant. I, I didn't have a clue about eating or, I mean, yes, about eating, not about cooking. <laughs> when I left home, I was 21 and it was so sad. So I, I did learn very, very quickly. But it, it, it was stressful because it was like, I really need to get this right because I don't want to, I don't want to keep eating frozen pizza. So mm. I think that you're, you're so right to, to equip your children beforehand. Mm -hmm. It's going to give them a, such a great start in life. And it also has an impact on their health. That's another thing. Yes, yeah, mm. it does. And Sarah, you mentioned it earlier. It's about balance in life. Yeah. Mm. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys, I don't enjoy a takeaway. <laughs> I don't enjoy you know a bit of rubbish from time to time, but it's all about balance. And we hear it so often, don't we? We hear people talk about a balanced diet and people go, oh, you know, it's as simple as this. If you eat some rubbish one day, eat a little bit healthier the next day. You know, it's, it's, it's that yin and yang. And, and that's so true. And, and if you are cooking from scratch using fresh ingredients, you're 80% you're of the way there really. Um, That's what we, we do. We are an advocate of how can we cook everything from scratch. Exactly. You can choose to have chocolate or you can choose to have vegetables, but at least you know exactly what you're putting into our food. Exactly. And three to the rescue, we have always been talking about this. But if we were to ask you one recipe, which you're mentioning a lot of them, which one would be your favorite recipe? Oh, um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I, I know, I have to choose one only. It is tough. It is tough. Um, you have really put me on the spot now. No, I, I, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> unfortunately, I'm one of these people who I, I change as I go. You know, there's never anything, I've, there's no set list of recipes on my menu every week. It's kind of, it's always, oh, what do I fancy today? You know, it's, it's one of those. And I'm always working on recipes for one thing or another. So it, it always changes. But the one, you know, if there was one dish that I think I could go back to again and again and again is my um is my nan's um so my nan was from cape town in south africa and uh, she was from a, a cape malay background so we kind of grew up eating cape malay food which are you know curries bradies uh, which are like stews and Ooh, stews yeah. that's that was like my that was my thing growing up and my nan always used to cook a thing she so when she came over to the uk uh I'll give you a little history lesson on my family now. So my granddad was in the Navy. He met my nan over in Cape Town, fell in love, brought her back to the UK. And my granddad couldn't pronounce these, you know, fabulous sounding dishes. Um, so when, when he came back, my nan used to cook this dish. It was a tomato brady. And he said, no, we're going to call that one tomato food. And there was okay. another one, tuna briani. Uh, no, we're going to call that one fish food. So we, we, that's how we grew up eating it. You know, it was like, oh, Nan, can you cook us fish food? Can you? But her tomato brady, which is lamb cooked down with potatoes and tomatoes, onion, garlic, spices. It's just a big bowl of love, basically. And if there was ever one dish that, you know, if I was sort of feeling a bit down in the dumps, that is going to pick me up. It is definitely that, you know, it's just... She used to she used to cook it. Um, you know, we we didn't have 
budgets for food, you know, pretty much when we got up. So it was the cheapest cuts of meat available. So my nan used to use scrag end and uh, lamb, which is the neck. Okay. Mm. Uh, so it was all cooked on the bone as well. And just the flavor, I can still taste it. I can oh, still yeah. taste it to this day, you know, exactly how my nan made it. I make a pretty good effort, but it's never... Quite but I think you need effort. to start converting into the thermomix. I can see a new collection called Recipes of Love. Apart from which, we might have to rename the fish food. The fish food, we can call it something else. <laughs> and then, when you are using your thermomix, is there any trick that you would like to share with everybody that it will be it will work good for you? Um, do you know what? I just think in terms of an all round piece of kit. I, people immediately sort of think, oh, you know, it's a food processor. For me, I love that it does everything. And, and I know you guys, when you saw me at Birmingham, it was the sous vide mode, which I absolutely love. Yeah. And that's, that's the one thing that I, I because if, you have to, if you've actually seen a sous vide machine, they're a huge piece of kit. Oh. And it's such a fantastic way of cooking. And they get used in restaurants time and time again. So it, for me, that was the piece of technology on there which really made me me buzz because that's bringing the restaurant side of things into your home yeah. so just to break it down to any any of you guys that are listening or watching sous vide is a way that you can slow cook uh, a piece of meat or fish or vegetable in a in a backpack basically so you can make your own using sandwich bags and, and water to get the air out of the bag but basically you're locking in all of the flavors within that bag and cooking something really, really gently. So for example, if we were to do, I mean, one of my favorite things to do is actually a steak because you can put the steak into a, a backpack bag along with some, maybe some oil, some herbs, some garlic. You pop that into the Thermomix and you set it onto sous vide mode. Now, if you want your steaks medium rare, you set it to 57 degrees, you know, and it cooks it. And the meat will be, it, when it comes out of the bag, it yeah, looks yeah. uncooked, but it's, it's yeah. perfectly, perfectly cooked inside. And all you do then is just sear it in a pan to get some color on it. And you have the most perfectly cooked steak. And that's what a lot of restaurants do. They, they, they have their steaks, their uh, fillet of beef or whatever it might be, portioned up to say a medium rare. And then they're just seared in the pan. They're ready to go almost. So it's just a, wow. it's an amazing way of cooking. That's funny that you mentioned that because when we were in Birmingham, that's one of the recipes you did. You cook a hake in sous vide. And that I was did. the first recipe I ever cooked in the thermal mix, ah. so trying that method. The one that you did. <laughs> so you have influence <laughs> of me already. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, that's amazing. So what I have actually loved um, about thermal mix is the fact that it keeps evolving. So when, when, we, uh, when we did the demonstration in Birmingham and I, I first demoed the sous vide function, which, is, which was a new function at the time. Um, wow. And I think, you know, it blew everyone away. It's like, wow, we can cook like this in the Thermomix. Now, at the time, we were having to use the, uh, the straining basket to yeah. put the fish in or, or, the, or the meat in, which actually doesn't give you a lot of space to do slightly bigger things. Um, but what I love about Thermomix is they listen to people that cook with Thermomix. And it's like, that's an amazing function, but we want to be able to do bigger things. So they got the blade cover now, which goes in the bottom yeah. and you can put large, as long as you've got a bag big enough to stick your meat in, that sounded really dodgy then, didn't it? Um, <laughs> as long as you've got something yeah, to put your, your cut of meat in and it fits within the, uh, the mixing bowl, you're good to go. And that, I, I love that function. Thank you. I mean, thanks to you, I learned because I had never used a sous vide before because I thought I need one of those machines to seal the bags. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was with you uh, in Birmingham <laughs> when you explained that you can actually seal it with water. And I was like, that was life changing. So <laughs> thank you, because that was a tip for me. It's, it's all about the little tips, you know, just making life that little bit easier. Great. So we have only one last question for you, Dean. That's okay. that I wants to ask you. So, okay, Dean, we'll talk to the Dean before Met Thermomix. Okay. Remember that guy? Yeah. What advice would you give him? Oh, 
I would just be, uh, the, the advice would be to, to be open to new, new things, new technologies. And because I think we all get very stuck in our ways. You know, we think we know the path that we're on and we tend to stick with it because we know how to do it. So the more we know how to do something, the easier it gets. But I think sometimes you get very channeled with what you're doing. You, you continue on one route. So my advice would be to, to open your mind and actually have a view that there are things that can, can really change your life. And I'll, I'll, I'll throw it back to a story, actually, um, on MasterChef. Now, because I had no experience of technology, really, in terms of even, you know, when, when I used to whip up cream, I used to do it with a hand whisk, you know, it's, and I'm there for 10 minutes doing it because I didn't trust in technology. So back then, when, you know, when you've got 40 minutes to cook a dish and I'm spending 10 minutes whipping up cream, you can see why this became vital back then. An issue. Um, because if you've got something like a Thermomix, you can just stick on the side to go, right, whip the cream, you press go, and it's doing it for you. You can get on with something else. So yeah. it, it would be, and, and I've always, back then, I was always very much that person which, no, I'll trust in myself. I won't trust in anything else. So my advice would be just to open your mind to things that can actually help you, not only in the kitchen, but, but in life as well. And um, it, it does take a bit of time to get used to that sort of scenario where you're relying on other bits and pieces, but it can really help you. And, and as we, I keep touching back upon, it's, it's all about confidence in life and, and being from someone who really suffered with confidence issues up until sort of very recently in, in my life. Um, that's the one message I really want to get across to people. Don't let yourself be, you know, put down because you feel you can't do something and, uh, you know, always keep that positive mindset because I truly believe you know, just take my life. For example, from where I've come from to where I am now, you know, with a, with a few hiccups along the way, by believing in myself eventually and i say eventually because it took me a long time to get there you can really accomplish anything so um that would be my advice well it's admirable to see it you know and to see your journey and the determination that you didn't give up because that would have been the easy option and how you kept believing in yourself so thank you so much for sharing that with us. that's very thank inspiring you. very very inspiring mm -hmm. and uh maria did you want to say something else no, no, just thank you very much. Uh, as I said, uh, you were really enjoyable when you when we watched you for the first time. And it's like we know you already because we are watching you all the time <laughs> your live videos uh, in the uh, internet. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you have hopefully, to. Hopefully, I'll be back soon doing some more bits and pieces with Thermomix anyway, because <laughs> it feels like um it, it feels like a really amazing family and uh I I had a lot of support from from the likes of you guys, you know, during the, the, the time I was, I was actually, you know, doing all the, the, the live videos. You know, the fact that you you really encouraged your your friends, your colleagues to to join in, participate. Um, it really did mean a lot to, to me and Indy as well. You know, we had, we had a lot of fun, but we couldn't have done it without the support of you guys as well. So um, it does feel like a little little family. And hopefully when, you know, life let's keep fingers crossed yeah, life gets back to normal a little yeah, bit we can um we can do something a little bit like what we did in birmingham as well and we can come and do a nice face-to-face -face, you know and rather than doing this on a zoom call we can we can I all know. do it face to face and, and and do a little bit of cooking tasting chatting you know and uh you, yeah, you have really to come to see us to to court with uh with indy and with liz the three of you down here for a weekend do we have so Perfect. much fun we'll show you around <laughs> yeah definitely definitely we will do that uh, before we go, I mean, we don't want to go without asking you, Dean, can you please remind everybody, where can we find you? Where was your name uh, on Instagram, Facebook, your blog, please? Okay, so it's very, very easy, actually. So all of my social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all at Dean Edwards Chef. I've got a YouTube channel called Dean Edwards Proper Food. Um, yeah, so you can find me on their website, www.deanedwards.co.uk. So I'm pretty sure you'll find me on, on one of those. But um, yeah, one of my favorites at the moment, I know 
old people like myself shouldn't be on TikTok, but I'm loving it on there. Um, well, I love I the one I'm chopping. That. That's such a good one. It's fantastic. <laughs> I wouldn't challenge you, though. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give it a go at some point. Well, I don't know. I don't have many yeah, chances with you anyway. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't want to test my luck against a Thermomix in a chopping challenge anyway. <laughs> oh, no. no <laughs> wings, I'm sorry to say. Thank you so much, Bing. It has been such a pleasure to, to share this, uh, this uh, time with you and uh, to get to know you better and also to listen to your inspiring uh, message and to insp your inspiring um, life experience. I'm sure that Sara and Maria agree with me. Yeah, thank you so okay. much. Oh, well, thank, thank you, you for having me, ladies. Anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, same here. And for everybody listening to us or watching us on YouTube, you will find all the information uh, about Dean and how to contact him, how to buy his book, what's his website on the show notes. So thank you for joining us one more week in three to the rescue interview. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.